Welcome to the lecture on cells. I call this lecture Inside the Membrane. Cells all contain a membrane. Um, that's one of the structures every known cell has. Uh, but they have lots of other structures as well. Let's look at this picture. Here is a uh, piece of human trachea, a piece of windpipe. And notice that there are cells over here, and they have these finger-like, hair-like extensions coming off over here. These are called cilia. And if we go get a sample of pond water, we'll find lots of little organisms in pond water that also have cilia. And if we compare these structures, we'll note that they're exactly the same. Why is that? Well, this pond water organism had an ancestor that, that had cilia, and it too has cilia. We are also descendants from this ancestor, therefore we too have cilia. Cells unite all living things, and we can see common structures in many of these living things. Now when we talk about sizes, um, Here's a figure at the top. Uh, notice that uh, this is the scale bar here. Scale bars are really important. Always pay attention to those. So this shows you that any uh, distance this far in this drawing is three meters. So you can you could lay this scale bar out over and over and over again and, and get the size of that blue whale, the largest animal ever known to exist, even bigger than the dinosaurs, right? And so you can get a sense for how big that whale is. He, um, down here is the smallest known organism uh, that I'm aware of anyway. This is a single-celled organism known as uh, mycoplasma. And you can see its size here. Uh, its diameter is 0.1 microns. That's a millionth of a meter as a micron. So the one thing this blue whale and these uh, mycoplasma cells have in common is that they all have cells. Cells are the smallest living thing. So when we go up the biological hierarchy from molecules to organelles to cells, cells are where life begins. Cells are alive. Life is a emergent property. It's an emergent property of chemical reactions and that property begins at cells. Organelles are not alive. They are parts of a living thing. But cells are part, or I mean, cells are not a part of a living thing. Cells are living things. And then you yourself, um, a larger living thing, are composed of trillions of these cells. When we're measuring things like a cell, or anything in biology really, we're going to be using the metric system. Okay, the metric system uh, starts off with a base unit, for example, a meter shown here. And we can convert larger by going this way, larger scale, or smaller scales by going down here. And a few of the ones you'll hear about more often uh, are kilo, that's a thousand. So for example, a kilometer is a thousand meters, kilometer, right? And that's 10 to the third meters. But going smaller, we're going to often use, oh, uh, going to often see these in this textbook especially. Um, so going down, we, we will hear about centimeters, right? That's a hundredth of a meter, 10 to the negative two. Um, we'll hear about millimeters, which are a thousandth of a meter. So there are a thousand millimeters in one meter. Micrometers, like the image I showed you before, it has this symbol here that looks like a U shape. Micrometers, um, there's a million of those per meter. Uh, those are often used when measuring parts of a cell, micrometers. A lot of cells are about 30 microns in diameter, for example. A lot of eukaryotic cells. Um, nanometers are uh, a billionth of a meter, and we use nanometers when we measure things like proteins and structures like that. So here's something for you to try. Convert 200 microns to millimeters. 200 microns to millimeters. How would you do that? Well, you would find micron down here. Right here it is, it's 10 to the negative 6. You're going to convert it to t this 10 to the negative 3. Well, notice how many decimal places are different here. In order to convert from one to the other, we're going to need to move a decimal place uh, three times, right? So a micron is smaller than a millimeter. So this is going to be a number smaller than 200. Two, three. This is going to be 0 0.2 millimeters. So I would practice converting a few of these numbers just to make sure you understand how the metric system works. There's plenty of examples online for you to do that. 
Now, cells were first discovered around 1665 by a guy named Robert Hooke. He uh, looked at cork, like from a wine cork, and he saw these structures that looked like rooms. Notice these look like little square rooms, and he called them cells because they looked like a cell, like a little room, like a monk would live in or a jail cell. Um, and uh, by 1839, two scientists, Schlieden and Schwann, came up with what we now call cell theory. And cell theory is one of those major theories in biology. Cell theory states that all organisms are composed of one or more cells. This excludes, of course, viruses, which are often not considered to be alive because they can't reproduce on their own, and they are not con uh, composed of cells. Cells are the smallest living things, meaning if you go below the size of a cell, you go to an organelle. That is not alive. Organelles can't live independently, but cells can. Cells arise only from pre-existing cells because it used to be thought that, for example, when it rained, that frogs would be created from the mud. But we now know that that's not happening. Frogs just wake up in the mud, right? So cells arise from pre-existing cells and... Um, then we've added to that since the time of Darwin, this last bullet point. Cells today represent a continuous line of descent from the first living cells. So life started billions of years ago through a process known as abiogenesis. Um, abiogenesis. That's called, that means life from non-life. And since then, all cells have arisen from those pre-existing cells. Um, if you study evolution, you're not really studying the origin of life, you're studying how life changes, but if you're really interested in how life started, look into abiogenesis. All right, so that's cell theory, and that's the size of the things we're talking about. So we're going to pick up from there in the next video, and we're going to um, look at the size of cells further, um, how we look at cells, and then we're going to start looking at the pieces of those cells.